All right, everybody, in this video, as you can see, I have two Altel X-Star Premium set up. Uh, one using the new beta firmware, and the second one using the old firmware, which I believe was 1.2.8 uh, or 1.3.1. I can't remember the exact number, but the new firmware, I believe, is 1.3.3. Uh, 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 but we're gonna, I'm going to show you the characteristics of the two different firmwares of each bird and what I liked about the old and what I like about the new. That's one of the things I don't like about both of them, the constant video signal interference thing. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and get this zoomed in and we'll see how they fly. Turn the camera a little bit, get them zoomed in there. All right, both of the both of my uh, compasses have been calibrated prior to this, so I do not need to do compass calibration at this time. Uh, this is kind of tough doing two controllers at one time. Not can I'm not going to record on either bird for the time being. I am just going to be flying them. So we'll get the new beta firmware which is the bird on the left we'll get the motor started and my new X star with the old firmware which is on the right and there we go now both birds are showing 22 23 minutes of flight time each both have stock blades. Um, the new firmware bird has a cottontail battery in it, which there's no difference other than color. But I'm going to go ahead and start the takeoff on the old firmware, which is the one on the right. So pay attention to this. I hope I've got it in good frame. Off we go. All right, back it off a bit, raise it up a bit. And I do have a pretty good wind here today, gusting to about seven or eight, sometimes 10. Go ahead and get it up there a little bit more. Now I will get the beta firmware in the air. All right, now we're gonna get the beta one up in the air. Get the motors going and take off. I'm going to get them out of each other's way there a little bit. As you can see, the new, the beta firmware comes up to about five feet, give or take. And I'll position them both there. And we'll watch them here for a few minutes and we can see which one does better here in this wind. You can see on the old firmware, it kind of struggles with altitude. Kind of trends up, comes back down, trends back up, comes back down. And again, I have a pretty good wind right now. Like I said, gusting to around 10 not quite but you can see in the the, the weeds there in the background that um, we do have some pretty good gusts here today but you can see the new beta definitely holds its position a bit better than the old firmware and i'm actually going to bring that guy over a little bit here and leave it there make sure i've got it in frame good Zoom in a bit. Come back out so both are in frame. See when the wind gust comes through, you can see the old the old firmware kind of struggles with it just a bit. But the new firmware seems to be pretty solid. It tries to hold its position much, much better. 
And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and land this bird, land the new firmware. Back down on the pad if I can. Come on, get on there. And I'll bring the old firmware bird in a little closer so that we can see some some of the things a lot of people were unhappy with with the Autel. This one actually doesn't seem to do it in quite near as bad as what uh, what my old one did with the new firmware. Let's bring it down just a little bit. Bumping my camera, sorry about that. I'm gonna bring it down. Now I'm gonna do a right hand yaw. And it's kinda kinda jittery as you can see it. Not the greatest on the yaw and you can see it's having a hard time holding its position they're performing this maneuver it's going up and it's doing that on itself the only input that i'm doing is the yaw now we'll do a left hand the left hand is a bit smoother on this one but on the old one with the old my old bird with the old firmware both directions were kind of jittery which wasn't which wasn't horrible but still, you can see in the right hand y'all and what it's doing now, holding its position. It's doing that all on its own. So that's the first thing. And that probably affected a lot of the other flight characteristics with this particular drone. So what I'll do is I'm going to go out, I'm going to turn it, and I'm going to bring it back. Get it up in the air a little bit. Make sure it's still in frame. Turn and bring it back. And turn close. And I know I got it out of camera frame. Let's see if I can back that off. No, nope, that's as far back as I can get it. But it never with the old firmware it didn't it didn't it it turned okay when you're trying to do a a real heavy turn but it didn't it just turns see what I mean by that it just turns and the next thing is it's stopping at speed and I know I don't have that in frame I mean it stops but it coasts for quite a quite a ways see that it coasts and then it brings itself to a stop. I'll bring it back in here straight towards the camera. Hopefully I don't hit the camera again. And stop. See, it kind of coasts its way in. Which wasn't a bad thing. It was something I was very used to. Even though it did cause me a few, <laughs> a few cra crashes here and there. From not judging, especially on the side to side. Where you can't see where you're going. And we'll get it back here in frame. And that, the biggest gripes that I had with it, uh, with as far as the flight, was pretty much the yaw and the stopping. The speed and everything else was good. Um, but the, in the GPS mode, those characteristics carry over to the attitude mode or ATTI. So it did pretty much the same thing in ATTI, which you should practice in to uh, get your skills up with the bird. I'm going to go ahead and land it back. And the last thing with this guy is how long it takes to shut it down and stop. That's how long it takes to stop.
And now uh, we will do on the left my old bird with the new firmware. Starting off with the takeoff. First we'll get our motors going and we'll take off. The first thing I noticed right after I did the update on the firmware was this. It takes off with authority and it stays in position. And now it's gonna make a liar of me here a little bit, but it does a lot better job staying in position than what the old firmware did as far as that goes. Now I'll back the camera off a bit get it up in the air to about the same height as the other and leave it there and as you can see even with a little bit of wind that we have here it's doing a pretty good job keeping its position and that was a pretty good gust there Zoom it back out. And here was the next, the next plus that I found with the, I'm gonna back it off here. It's still kind of in frame. Raise it up just a little bit. Bring it back down, bring it in. The stopping. It stops much better. Within about 12 to 15 feet, I would say but it does it with authority. I'll go out, stop. Come back, stop. Much better, much better control. Now I'll do the right y'all. This was with very little input. I have not I have not played with any of the EXP settings to this point. And now the left y'all. Boy, that wind is really picking up today. That was a little bit faster on the left y'all. But you can see how much smoother the y'all is now and how much more improved it is. Now it seems to be having just a little bit of trouble with this wind, with the bopping up and down. But it stays within about three feet of its position. And this is a pretty good gust coming here. See how it does here. And it holds. I wish that when I had started to do this production, um, there, was, there was virtually no wind, and that's what I was hoping to fly in. but. I didn't have very much daylight to work with here left and getting all this stuff set up and then time to edit, you understand. But you can see it holds its position very well. Now, I'll go out here and do a turn and I'll show you what I mean by the turning on the new firmware. We'll go out and we'll turn, see how it banks? Banks like a plane which makes much smoother videos on turns. Much better. Banks as it turns. So much better. So much better. Get it back out there. Uh, the only issue I think that has really carried over that I have noticed between the old and the new firmware is the horizon with the gimbal. Um, it takes a little bit to, to, to get it back just right. It takes a few seconds after you're doing some good yaw turning uh, or some heavy back and forth action. It takes it a second to get back to, to level. That's the, only, that's the only real thing that I have noticed to this point. Uh, everything else uh, for as much as I've flown the beta to this point, probably probably maybe an hour, 
maybe two hours. I've been through probably two sets of batteries and I now have six. Um, but I haven't noticed anything that, that really calls out. Um, the power of it seems to be better as far as its ascend and descend. It comes off with authority and rockets straight up into the sky. The auto land, uh, I've seen and heard too many stories of tip overs and things like that. While I'm not particularly afraid of a tip over because I've crashed this thing more than I think anybody else with an autel has at this point. But the auto land seems to be too, too rough. And I think they actually have an update for that here that's coming out to slow it down by just a little bit so that it doesn't come down so hard. But auto landing or hand or manual landing or hand catching seems to be about the best the best solution for that at this point. And I'll go ahead and sit it back down. But as you notice there, the motor shut down almost immediately, and that's a big improvement when you need to shut it down and shut it down. We'll go ahead and get the old firmware back up in the air just for another comparison. Seems to take its time a bit. Let's get this camera back up at it. Back it off just a little bit. Brighten the video up just a little bit. That helped out some. No input. Yeah, it's been bopping around there a little bit with the with the wind. And you know what? I'm gonna take this guy up in the air a little, little bit. I'm gonna turn it. I'm going to let it hover, and I'm going to take some pictures with the other one. Stay in frame, stay in frame. This is too much fun. Now the one that's giving me the video signal interference is the uh, beta firmware, the one on the right. But that could be because I have two remotes going at the same time, sitting right next to each other here. But in this particular moment, let me make sure that I'm still in frame with both of them. They both seem to be holding their position fairly well. 
And again, the one on the right is the new beta firmware. No, no. The one on the left is the new beta firmware. The one on the right is the old firmware. This is going to be really bad to edit. <laughs> But again, left, beta, right, hold. Of course, with the new firmware, you have the pinch to zoom feature, which is okay. The old one at this point, I do not believe has that ability, and it does not. And I thought that was something with the app and not with the bird itself, because I had the pinch to zoom feature on the old firmware on my old bird. And there the wind picks up there a little bit more. And I'll bring Old Bird new firmware back in for a landing. And it shuts down pretty quick. Get the camera back down on them. Zoom it in. And bring the new bird old firmware back in. Back, right over, up, up, too far. But you can see how long the motors stay going. And we'll go ahead and get a few more shots. Okay, new bird, old firmware, get it in the air. this off here Get to looking at it let's get it up there a little bit more get it up in the air and bring it down and stop see how it kind of kicks to the right get it back up and bring it back down and stop don't hit my other one. You can see that there. Let's go ahead and get it back on the ground. And this one's battery's just about dead. Let's get this one going. Get it up in the air. I see. Ascending much faster descending stop does not turn ascending much faster descending 
does not turn when you let off the stick. Uh, the new firmware, which utilizes the star point system that was used in the old firmware for situations when GPS was not established or GPS lock was not, or not enough sat satellites were used to keep it locked. Now it can, can be used to uh, keep it at a certain altitude as it flies across the ground. And I found it's within about five feet or so. So as you're seeing it here, uh, the bird on the right is the new one with the old fir firmware and the bird on the left is my is my original with the new firmware. So what we'll do is we'll start off with the new one running the old firmware. So we'll get the motor started. And I'll go ahead and just get it off the ground myself. It doesn't like to stay aloft when it's that low. And now I'll show you in front of the camera. Let's let it get focused in. Star point right there, the very top right hand corner, zero feet. It is hovering roughly, focus back in, about two feet off the ground. And I will take it down the driveway. And now I have to keep it up. Keep it up, and I'll stop, I'll turn it around, and I will bring it back, get it recording, it's kind of just be bopping whichever way it wants to, and I'll stop it there, and as you can see, that back into focus star point still says zero so the only time if I was to bring it here in the garage um, then the star point would kick in the optical flow would kick in and it'd help to keep it in position indoors where GPS is not available so I will go ahead and land this guy no no come back let's get you right about there Take a little while for the motor to shut down. I'll stop that recording. Next, we will get the old bird with the new firmware off the ground. We'll get the motor started. And I'll do an actual auto takeoff on this one. That's something I really like about this new firmware. It doesn't get it up too high. It does it with authority. It gets her done. So now I'll get her back down, get this one down on the ground. Now I'll bring this in there. Come on, focus. You can see it's showing one foot on the star point. And now I'm just going to push forward. I am not adjusting its altitude in any way, shape, or form and it keeps itself pretty level across the ground within reason you get going too quick and then it will it will drop a little bit but usually catches itself before it catches the ground turn it around start it recording and bring it back and it keeps itself in position and the star point look in there says about two feet just just awesome and then if I can sync these videos up that's gonna be pretty hard to do but you didn't like that did you get your motors going again get you off the ground that was kind of weird. But yeah, the new the new firmware with the uh, with 
the start point system active at all times is an excellent addition. And now actually what I'll do, I'll take it up, take it over here to the roof of my house, and I'll show you what I mean by this guy. So I'll get you up there. I'm going to bring it down to where the star point says it's about a foot. I'll show you there. One foot. And now I'll press forward, and this, it'll do it all by itself. It'll raise its altitude going up, and then it'll descend as it comes down. I know you can't see that on the camera, but that's just awesome. The garage that I'm filming in right now, I have actually... Uh, I've actually tried to hit it with a little bit of speed and it actually kept up fairly well. It didn't hit the roof. I stayed about two feet above that though. Bring it back down into frame. Up there a little bit. Now, since I'm recording on that bird, I'll wave high. And you can see my little setup here. Now I'm going to back him off. Stop the recording. That guy. Turn it around. And we'll do a stability test while I got it right here and I've got no wind. I'll go ahead and leave that there. We'll get this one going. Have to adjust the altitude on the old firmware until it decides to take. Make sure I got them both in frame. Okay, so now again, the bird on the right is the new bird with old firmware. The one on the left is my old with the new firmware. And you can see the one on the right is already starting to drift out of frame. Bring it back over. Now I have absolutely no wind. And as you can see, the new firmware on the bird on the left is staying right where it's supposed to be. And I'll give you one thing I have noticed about the new firmware that it doesn't, doesn't gain as many satellites. I'll show you that here real quick. Come on, focus in. Focus, there we go. This one's showing 16 satellites in GPS. And that's on the new firmware. The old firmware is showing 20, I believe, if it'll focus in. 20 satellites. And I, I almost guarantee that the difference in them is that since the star point is used to help maintain position at lower altitudes, uh, some of the GPS functionality is probably set to do something else. Uh, while the old one was re relying almost completely on GPS, which can be done, but it doesn't seem to be near as stable. firmware seems to be drifting very very slightly but I don't want these guys getting too close together so let's get you out there a little bit
And one of the things that I'm noticing now is that the old firmware holds its position with a fair amount of drift within a few feet, but it's not as it's not as jerky as the new firmware. The new firmware seems to be a little jerky, as you can see it there. How it's kind of bebopping around. It's holding its position fairly well. But it's like it's nervous. While well, the old one just kind of hanging out. Doesn't do anything too too quick. They're both doing pretty good. Get them both back into frame. And I actually think I'm going to go ahead and end this here. Because my camera was flashing at me for some reason. I'm going to go ahead and land them both. Uh, I'm actually going to start off by... Auto landing the old firmware. Bring it over into frame a little bit. And hit land. It comes down gently. Just about hits the ground. Hovers for a second and touches down. The auto land feature on the old firmware, I was never uh, I was never displeased with it. I kind of hesitated a little bit more than I would like. But now I'll bring the new firmware over and I'll show you how that guy does. Make sure it's in the frame. Let's go ahead and zoom in on it there a little bit. Now I'm going to hit land. Comes down. Boom. And off. So you can see a, a, a tremendous difference in how, how they land uh, with the auto land feature. Okay, now that I got that, and now I'm going to show you, you now let's see, we're gonna go out here and do a little bit, do some more turns. Get it off the ground again. Gonna go out. Notice how it banks as it turns. Very nice, smooth turns. Make them tight. And make them quick. This is the new firmware on this guy here. I'll bring it back. I'll land it. Shut her down. Now we'll try that same maneuver with the old firmware. Get it off the ground. About the same height. Come on, stay up there. Stay up there. And we'll go out. And we'll turn. See, it does not, it doesn't bank quite as significantly. Bring it back. It's more of a flat turn.
So you can see the difference there. Pretty substantial difference in between how they turn and yaw, which I'm sure was all part of the yaw, but I'm sure it was way more complicated than just than how I make it. But I'll go ahead and put this one on the ground. And I'm going to go ahead and end it here. And after all that, you can see that the improvements with the beta firmware version 1.3.30, uh, which would be the bird on the left. And that, of course, is my old drone. Uh, I've had that one for a little over a year now. And my new drone with the old firmware on the right the improvements have been substantial in the yaw and the control uh, some of the small things of course the auto land the horizon on the gimbal um, are two concerns that a lot of people have voiced on i will do the same here uh, everything else is spot on the yaw could not be any better the the banking and turns could not be any better uh, all the same speed things of that nature the stopping power of it now which in my previous video where I actually hit my tripod uh, with it, it kind of surprised me after the testing that I had done. But uh, flying from my garage, which is all metal, could have had something to do with it. You know, could have, I could have been uh, thumbing the stick a little bit. Hard to say. No harm, no foul. Well, actually, it separated the camera and broke it in half and had to get a new camera. It was a good day. Um, but as far as keeping my new drone with the old firmware, I'm going to go ahead and update it just because it's so much better. But I wanted to keep it. I wanted to keep it with the old firmware so that I could show all you guys the improvements. Um, for those of you who may be thinking about an Autel, um, a final thing that I will say, and this goes directly to Autel, please, please release the software development kit that way we can get some third-party apps for mapping and things of that nature so that these can be used in more commercial settings um, it's quite difficult to do a 3d map with one of these guys doing everything manually and if a few of these other companies like drone deploy or pix 4d was able to develop an app for the autel would be would be awesome that would give these guys give you guys a leg up on the uh dark side as I'll call it because uh, I do believe that these are on par with the Phantom 3 Pro but not quite the Phantom 4 Pro I would say a Phantom 4 definitely and then of course the FLIR camera and the one inch sensor on the new camera that's supposed to be coming out please let's let's get sing let's get them rolling but with that I'm gonna end it here if you liked it like it if you disliked it dislike it please Leave a comment if you have any questions and hit that subscribe button. I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching.